Is it possible to have that? The coffee? Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Here, you can pour it. No. What's the, I would not dare. Yeah, pour come on. Oh my, I don't think it matters how you pour it, right? It doesn't matter. Oh, it does because you it can does. spill it. Yeah. Because you can spill it. <laughs> you can get it all over you yourself. You can spill That's coffee true. with your friends. But I, I kind of like that. I bathe in coffee. How many cups do you have a day? I'd say two in the morning, one in the afternoon. No way. Oh, yeah. To express those though. I don't drink like, I don't have a trip coffee maker. Oh, that's um, cool. Spitfire. Just, I like it small because that's where I learned to drink coffee was in France. I get yeah. that. And I, you know, finally broke down as Pat O'Connell would always be on the coffees and, and I was always, nah, nah, I don't drink coffee, I don't drink coffee. And then all of a sudden I was like, all right, I'll try it. And, you know, and the, their coffees are like, you know, that big. Yeah. Yeah. And they're short and fast and I like to go fast, so. <laughs> <laughs> I like speed. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> so, you know, I finally started like just go, going with the flow and stop fighting the, you know, go with the grain, not against it. Yep. And then you just started opening the vortex hole just opens. Yeah, and, like, and then you're like, oh, I need another one. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, wow, that tastes good. After like surf, that. you're cold. And... and then I started learning taste, you know, like the different tastes. And that's when I started like going, oh my God, there's some, there's a lot of bad coffee. <laughs> a lot of, it's almost, that's what you realize when you go back to it. You're like, holy so that's a burn. I came home yeah, and I was like, there. I was like, wow, that doesn't taste like Europe. <laughs> you know what I tripped on in Europe too was that you have that combo of the espresso, but also your jet lag. So you're looking to stay awake. And yeah. Like, oh, I could totally do another one of those. Like, I'm either gonna sleep or try to get another surf. <laughs> right. And like four, five, six espressos later, you're like, whoa. Yeah, because you can surf till like ten o'clock at night. So you you have espresso at six at night. Have a surf, go to dinner. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, you're not going to bed for another six hours, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah, nice. <laughs> it's pretty cool that way. How about you? How many cups? One to two. I Five. taste a lot. You know, I spit it out though a lot. I can go four. Yeah. Five. Hell yeah. Before I open, <laughs> before I started like and serving it all the time. Yeah, four, five. Yeah, yeah. easily. No I was problem. Like, so good. I love. I like the two. I like the one in the morning, like after I've had a little food, and then this one is like my. Like I've either had a good day or I need to have a good afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm resetting at this moment in the day. <laughs> none of the, none, I thought you had like four cups before you went surfing watching your VHS. Well, we were just talking all the VHSs <laughs> in the basement. Oh, if, wow. you, if you literally pair a cup of coffee with a surf movie, it's, it's like you've had like three or five cups. You're, like, yeah. <laughs> You're peaking. peaking hard. <laughs> I mean, why go down when you can go up? Well, it's a good thing to go up. <laughs> So what are we, what are we drinking? Um, an Ethiopian coffee, washed Ethiopian um, from the Kolobolcha mill. So pretty clean, little floral. It's light. Berries, yeah. Little did you light. roast this? Yeah. Did you, did you go to Ethiopia at all? Not yet. I got invited just to go like three weeks ago, but I had a trip to Brazil lined up. We got invited, they, it was really cool. They invited 20 roasters from around the world um, for a special auction in Brazil to highlight like because Brazil is known for like commodity coffee, like low grade coffee, but they had an auction of like 90 plus point coffees. And so I went and hung out with 19 different roasters from around the world, Slovakia, France, Canada, Japan, China, Australia, and we bid on an auction. Wow. Yeah, it was cool. It was funded by the Brazilian Specialty Coffee Association, like the government. They paid for everything. For wow. That. So I, had, I couldn't go to Ethiopia. <laughs> is that because they're trying to get the word out that they're... They're trying to like let people know that Brazil makes good coffee. That's really interesting. And, yeah. And the people are super nice and the food's really good and it's beautiful and it's easy to get around. And I'm like, I got to go to Brazil more often. I think because a lot of the surf areas that you go actually are major producers for coffee. Like yeah. Africa, Indo, Brazil. It's kind of the base, like when I was starting this, I was like, ah, it'd be so cool if in like four years, kind of right where I am now, I can go to visit a coffee farm and go on a surf trip. <laughs> uh, I did that last year. Can we went to El Salvador, 45 minutes to the farm, 45 minutes to the beach. That's sick. We got completely skunked though. But uh, you should leave, you start leaving a board at all these That's places. That's what I'm going to start doing this year. That way yeah. you just show up and your board's there. I'm going yes. to Panama and Costa next month and I'm going to start stashing boards everywhere. All right. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually like you're on a surf tour. You're on the dream tour. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Dream being. Go work, taste coffee, and then go for a surf He's tour. on the CT coffee tour. <laughs> yeah. He's getting, I'm in my basement watching VHS. You're like, I'm down in El Salvador. Except I never have time to surf anymore. So I go down there and get my ass kicked for like 
40 straight and then, uh, but that's a good feeling when you're getting good waves for yeah. like, a, like a week you're like get oh yeah again. you just start like going second sessions even though you can barely paddle and kind of work into it absolutely yeah. wow well, or you reach out to tk you get on your little <laughs> fitness program get you all Dude, i have your dvd oh really yeah that's pretty funny i used to do it that's an older that was oh, like older that one. was eight years ago yeah. Wow. Have you trained, like, are you doing more of that kind of stuff? Yeah, I just turned kind of an Instagram page, real low key. It's called Arc Method. And it's just where I post uh, exercises. Very cool. Yeah. So I do that. And it's not like I post every day at all or anything like that. It's just kind of like once a week, I'll do a little post up there. That's but, sick. Yeah. It's fun. You know? Is that surf based or is that just fitness and life? Just fitness and life, really. You know? Fit dude, TK. Okay, I'm, I'm like, you're did you ever do pencil the pencil sharp, brother? <laughs> did you ever do the, the, I did. the workout? Yeah, Pat Dan and I had it. Yeah, yeah. For it's, a ball, like you didn't think it'd be so hard with just the inflatable ball. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's awesome as well because you can travel with that mindset. I don't know what the the new stuff is, but like it was cool because it was sustainable and you could just bring it anywhere. Like traveling on the road, it was almost like knowing those little trick tips. It's weird because it's like, as I've gone on, I'm using less and less weight and just more like body weight and doing stuff because, you know, talking to Tim Brown, he was like, look, I don't think there's so much power in people that has not come out yet. They keep working out, trying to get stronger, but they haven't even tapped into what they have. So there, you kind of need to almost go backwards and start going, oh, let's do some more body weight stuff and let's get in positions with just our body weight and see how strong we are. And you find out all these little tiny exercises that look easy when you watch them or actually hard when you get in them. For sure. And so I'm, I'm not, I don't do like heavy weights anymore or anything. I'm just kind of tuned into like, oh, like my knee's a little sore. It's probably because these muscles are shut down. So I just go in, I'll do some single leg lunges or something, you know, and turn them back and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, my knee feels better now. Just because the muscle wasn't turned on. Have you always been that, I mean, fitness forward like where was the start of that um probably having like when i was 15 getting those nine like i have three fruit fused vertebrae and nine pieces of metal on my back and i still still do whoa yeah so it's like i have to stay on top of it and back then i was like coming out of that surgery and they were like you're never going to surf again and it's kind of like you know Gave him the middle finger and I was like, I'm gonna figure this out, you know? <laughs> and I just started reading stuff and I just remember like Tom Kern and Tom Carroll talking about fitness and yes. training. And yes. And that's what put me in the gym. I was like the only surfer that was really training. That's what the Tom Kern stuff is so funny because he's like almost such an enigma and he's like, seems really laid back. Like Tom Carroll looks spitfire. Like you yeah. could be like, this guy's training for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I always loved hearing like Tom Kern was keeping it sharp. Yeah, he was keeping it sharp in his own. He was always open to yoga when he was a kid, and like really young. And I think that's what it is, is just have an open mind. It's like, you know, yeah, coffee's gonna be different in 10 years. Right. Training's gonna be different. Totally. Like what we're doing now, we're yeah. gonna do, keep doing maybe half of it, but then there'll be a bunch of new stuff to do. Yeah. You know, there's always, it's, not, it's just kind of fun. It keeps it fun. You know, keep, you couldn't go into the gym and do the same thing over and over for 10 years. I, I probably just quit. I'm yeah. Bored. You got to keep searching and learning and yeah. tuning in and keep it tuning fun. everything in. Totally. Yeah. How about in surf? I mean, it's got to be a similar mindset on the way. Totally. It's, it's, I'm riding different boards now that I'm off tour, you know, I'm riding twin fins and trying out new little models and yeah. having so much fun with it. I'm That's loving sick. it. I yeah. mean, you were on tour for like how long? Like we're talking you, two decades. That's so, <laughs> was it that long? Yeah. That's not It's dude. too long. For me a decade too long, but I don't know. Not even. <laughs> you got barreled out of your mind. Like that's probably the dosage right there. Yeah, that. yeah. I definitely hung in there for a while. Uh, you know, Kelly's got me beat, but that's, I don't know how he's doing. I, I look back on it and I'm like, God, I can't believe I did that, you know? But I think also that's one, that's like one facet, like right now, that's what I was so curious to ask you was like, where's the juice coming from? Cause you're, you're fired up still. I just, I love surfing. You know, there's always something better. And I, I'm thinking like, what can I do at 48? You know what I mean? Like what is, what's the limit of a 48 year old? You know, and I got that bald guy still on tour and he's pushing everyone to get better. And you know, I got, you guys around and I got Mick around and just without, you know, that kind of, I'm self-inspired already, but 
just because I love surfing so much, but like it really helps to have like guys around that are fired up that want to just surf no matter what, whether they're contest surfers or not. Yeah. I just like guys that have that kind of like fun enthusiasm in the water when you're surfing with them. Like people, people that bring you up, you know? Oh, totally. Yeah, I feel like for me growing up, Pat and Dane were like, it was easy because they were, we lived together. So it was just like, <laughs> yeah. you know, even if I wasn't really inspired to go surf, it's like, we'll get in the car because we're going, <laughs> you know? It's good to have people that communally stay lifted. I think you guys are the most inspired brothers <laughs> out there. <laughs> I mean, Mason Ho and Coco and, you know, Maiko would probably give you guys a run for your money, but oh, I'd love to see the six of you go on a surf trip. There'd be nothing but smiles and good times and good I, vibes. I can't wait for you to meet Pat, because like, if you have a cup of coffee with Pat. He came in the shop, I think. No, oh, Dane came in. Dane came in, yeah. yeah. But Pat, like, he's already like electric, and then when you have a cup of coffee with him he's like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh you put your seatbelt on yeah but you gotta know his parents and then you realize like where it all comes from gotcha you know? well that's a cool thing with surf i mean it's kind of passed down i mean we're all surfers like yeah it's kind of like you had to learn from somebody so you stay connected through that strain yeah yeah your dad's the man dude he's a funny he's character. the man yeah uh, there's a lot of people that there's some guys that we know um at a localized spot and he remember they remember his dad and oh yeah your dad it was funny it's like it was a pass fail like you know what I mean like like am I gonna get am I told to go in right now it's like well you're good yeah yeah no it's it's all good when they love him you know I was laughing because in San Diego well just moving down San Diego area I literally get into an Uber and she's like oh like this lady really nice lady and she's like oh you surf I'm like yeah she's like. Do you know Taylor Knox? No <laughs> way. Like, actually, yeah, I do. San Diego oh, hero. he's the best. I'm like, what? Like, this dude's ripping Ubers? Like, this is insane. Oh my the God, support down here in San Diego is incredible for sure. It is. It's, it, people are, are stoked. It's a different vibe than Orange County, you have to admit. You know, it's a whole different kind of thing. Totally. Each It's cool because, like, Santa Cruz has got their vibe, and then, you know, Huntington's got their vibe, and then Newport, and then... You, San Clemente, so it's cool how you go down the coast and each town has its, um, I don't know, kind of like strain and surfer that's been molded by the elders of the town. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. Did your parents surf too? Yeah. My nice. dad and my stepdad, they both surfed and my mom didn't surf, but yeah. it was always like, no matter what house I was at, there was the surfing going on, you know? That's cool. Yeah. For you with a style that you're surfing with a power base? Is that coming from guys from like the San Diego area or were you drawn from different inspiration? Um, I did look to some, there were some guys that lived in Carlsbad I really looked up to like David Barr, um, Phil Tribal was another one I really looked up to. Uh, Whit, Whit at Carlsbad Pipeline has helped me out a lot, kind of coaching me through some things when I was young. And just, yeah, they take me under their wing and tell me like, you're not going to do that and you're going to do this. And like, I remember as a kid, you know, you'd hop to make the shore break, you know, to make the reef farm. And I remember like David Barr yeah. going, if I ever see you hop again, I'm going to break your board. Like, he's like, use the things on the side of your surfboards are called rails. And you, you know, and I'd watch Tom Kern weave to the inside in Huntington beach. And he's like, see how he's weaving to the inside and keeping the speed. And so that was, those were like things I was told, like you have to do, you can't hop. Yeah. So do you trip on where it's at now? I mean, you must see the younger kids. And I mean, they're not all the time using the things on the side of their board. Yeah. Yeah. Rails, are, you know, they're almost in danger now in serving. I know, it's almost like seeing Bigfoot. But, <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's definitely some kids that are keeping it real. Like, I'm going to say kid, but like, you got Jordy and Dane, you know, they, were, oh, they yeah. pushed the envelope a mm -hmm. lot. And there's, there's young guys that know, like, you know, Dino's telling Chloe to surf the right way and, you know, do things the right way. And so I think it trickled you know, trickles down, but yeah. I still think that there's a, surfing hasn't kind of landed yet on its feet. I think there's still so much acrobatics going on, which are insane. And then you try to mold that into having good style, but then the angles you need to take to do airs are like kind of mid face bottom turns. And you know, that was something that I was told never to do. A mid face like, bottom turn. Yeah, you go to the bottom and turn as deep as you can. Yeah, you know? sure. Cause I think those iconic shots from back in the day, like, MR, right. Tom Kern, like those guys are deep in the bottom. Yeah. 
yeah. deep, right? Like right. literally like you're folded yeah. over. But that's not really a good bottom turn to do an air. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? You lose the speed by the time you land. <laughs> yeah. Like, sorry. So it's just like they're all they're finding these new kids are incredible. They're just they're finding the perfect like balance of it. Yeah. And that's what's fun to watch. Like John John, you know, crazy, amazing surfer, great air in the air, crazy in the crazy everywhere pretty much, you know, like the guys He's a really well-rounded surfer. He, I think he could win in like chest high waves and he can win the Yeti. I mean, he, he, yeah. he's doing that. Yeah, he's, he's doing he's, it. He's, yeah, like, yeah, he's properly doing that. So there's, those, there's it, I hope the young kids to, to learn how to become smooth, it'd be nice to see someone like Tom Kern style and with the radical aerial stuff and look smooth, but I wouldn't even know what it felt like to be up that high. So, <laughs> unless it's a plane, I wouldn't either. I mean, what's your take on it? Like with surfing and where it's coming from? I don't, from I don't think power surfing is ever going to go out of style. I still think it's like the truest form of like good surfing to me. Like it's what I've always kind of inspired to. You were a big inspiration to me. I didn't have parents that grew up surfing. So I started like on my own. I lived two hours from the beach. So I would. Where? In Ocean City, Maryland. Sick. Back in Maryland. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember. Two hours away from the beach, watching Shelter, watching you oh, and your cutbacks. Like, oh yeah, that's a great movie. Oh, super classic. inspirational. So, <laughs> yeah. and to me, that's kind of what surfing is. I think the airs, same thing, and stuff are awesome. Um, and I think you're bringing good style. Some people are bringing good style and stuff to them, but I don't think power surfing is going to go anywhere. I feel like, and I still think if you're out on any day and someone's doing down on the flat bottom turns straight up, like that's potentially going to be the best surfing out there. I feel like it's almost though, because we, like, I've definitely, the same way, like, your generation was this, I was seeing it from a level of, like, it's iconic, like, almost hero worship. Yeah. Like, I had, like, like, posters on my wall, and it was, like, that's what I wanted to embody in my surfing, and, and I feel like I'm, as the times are changing, like, I come from more, that is cool, to, like, let's try airs, but I wonder with kids, like, younger, like, I think, like, Dane and Jordy, they're phenomenal, but, like, almost the younger kids with... Like if you're looking at 14 to 16 year olds, like I wonder if they're thinking in that direction of like, it's hard to do a good power turn. It's like, it looks so good on photos, but it's actually kind of a hard technique to learn. Yeah. And if it's so sexy to do an air, is surfing changing? Am I just trying to be like, oh, I wish there was like more power or if it's actually happening? So yeah. that's just why I asked. Yeah, I think with anything, you know, I, I can look at, some of the new guys on tour and you could see someone go through a cutback and come out of it after the three quarter mark. Yeah. You know, and like, I would get yelled at for that. You yeah. Know what I mean, like they would be like, no, you go all the way back. Yeah. You know, and you hit the phone and like you wrap around. Like, yeah. But I was like just watching current videos every day. That's basically the only guy I wanted to watch. We, I can't help think, but, but help think too, if like that's potentially their equipment. Now, they're, are they designing boards now to not wrap around as easy and are they For sure. to go straight and Absolutely. stuff? Absolutely. I, I, don't, I don't know anymore, but I know when we were kind of working on your equipment, it wasn't, we didn't want to do that at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We wanted you to wrap around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was extra speed, yeah. not less speed, you know? I like have your boards change a lot from your time on tour. I mean, just on thrusters a lot. You know, I'm still like, I'm still a guy that likes that high performance surfboard, you know, your stock. 6.0, yeah. but I've just gone, okay, like there's a feeling now I can shift gears pretty easily from like a, like a sub vector little board that has a wide nose and pulled in tail to a twin fin. You know, I, I'll get out of my skip fries sometimes and long board. I, I just think now I'm like, hey, if the waves are small, like what's gonna make these small waves fun to me? Yeah. Totally, and, I mean, that's, and that's what keeps you going. Yeah, yeah, that's what keeps me going, but I can shift like really easily. Before I, I think I was a little bit rigid and stubborn or just didn't i was like oh i ain't gonna ride those boards you know like i'm on tour and you know ride those boards yeah because you have to ride what you're gonna right. compete on and stuff you kind of have to almost i guess i understand it from the perspective of watching pat on tour because i would travel with him to some of the events and like i feel like i was bringing different equipment to the same spots he was bringing his like this is my fever fever step up fever thicker fever thinner and it was like he, I get it, because when you're on tour, you got to keep the thing so well oiled. Yeah. Because almost mentally, you're going like, if I don't ride what I need to be practicing on, then if I lose a heat, then I, I should have been doing it the other way. 
And a lot of times there were probably heats back in the day, which I wish I had a twin fan. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, but I, the judges would just scorch you. Scorch right. you. You know, they'd be like, like, you ride a twin fin, he doesn't care. Yeah. You know, now it's cool because they're just going, they're opening it up. I think Kelly riding some twin fins and stuff have been, they've been like, wow, okay, why don't we just judge this? Now it's acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> you know, instead of judging uh, the board he's riding, oh, he might, he's not taking it serious. You know. Are we talking about Kelly in Japan? Yeah. Or is that the Aquila border? Yeah. It's cool. It, it's cool. Yeah. It's different. It's and it's frisky and, and you draw different lines and it makes you do different turns and that's you know kind of why i like the bonzers too it was like but if i was to paddle out in a heat at j-bay and a bonzer would they score me differently i, I don't know. wish because we did I would that like to see that we're tearing on the bonzer yeah, i mean i don't know i don't know if they would or not you know you'd hope not because i'd love to go out and try to compete on one yeah at j-bay and there's certain ways where I'm like, wow, those things would work. Yeah, they really would. <laughs> you know? Well, I think I remember, like, for sure, with Reynolds when he rode that MTF in France. In oh, yeah. But then the dumpster diver at Lowers as well was really interesting because, like, I feel like he kind of, like, shifted the thought process in that way at that time, which was like, I'm just, fuck it, riding this thing because it's fun. Yeah. You know, and, like, it almost brought people towards it. Like, that thing looks insane. Yeah, that started to open doors for, I think, you know, different boards. He's so radical that you, judges like couldn't deny yeah. it. You know what I mean? They're yeah. like, we can't not not score that. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was the best turn of the day. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you honestly. So, Galley, because we were working with Galley for yeah. a little bit when I was on tour, and I was doing a bunch of cutbacks, and he was like, "I'm going to tell you straight up, the only guy that's ever gotten scored for cutbacks on tour." Was Taylor not? He's like, don't <laughs> fucking do cutbacks. And I was laughing so hard. I was like, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's so genius, though. Like, you got a great cutback on you. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like Sunny. You know, Sunny's got that drop hammer, yeah. tur- like stomp turn. It's it's like Aki with his backside. Like, there's some things that they just people want to see. Yeah. You know, they want to see it from you. And you're like, but I've been doing it forever. And I'm like, yeah, we don't care. <laughs> we still want to see it. Yeah. That's so rad. I still haven't learned how to do it. Please do it again. <laughs> I think, I mean, for me, it was just being, because I wasn't an arrow guy or anything, it was just like trying to get really good at the basics. Bottom turn, basics, you know, like cut back. Like those are just basic turns that beginners, you know, do. Yeah. So that's all I was doing. It's like perfecting the basics. But I mean, you were taking, I think, to, for sure, like, we could agree, like, that's black belt level, what you were doing <laughs> with that. Like, it's, it's a little bit more grunt. Well, it's a ton grunt. Like, <laughs> I mean, just hearing you say, like, the first third of that car, like, you're into it, and then guys are cutting out of it. And that's exactly what I feel like with my brother, Dane. I was like, I was frustrated because I'm like, I can't get these photos that you guys are getting. He's like, you're trying to, like, pull this car. He's like, just that back one third is where the hot action is. And, like, you're not even getting into it. So, right. And so then my mind started thinking, it's like, it's actually really hard. You don't naturally really surf powerfully on the level of what you guys are doing. Right. And sometimes people go into a carve and then at the end of it, they go flat. The board will you mm-hmm. know, go flat. And you, you slide, for sure. That's a yeah. tendency. You know? And so that's like, it's like, where do you draw a line? Is that more difficult or less difficult than bringing it all the way around? Yeah, and the fins mm-hmm. breaking loose and, yeah. instead of just... To me, it's easier to break into a slide yeah. than it would be to carve around and less risk. Not as if it was bamboo pins or not. <laughs> That's true. Do you miss do you miss making fins? A lot. Every day. <laughs> I know, come on, really? Yeah, I do. Yeah? I loved it a lot. I really liked it. And I miss making boards too. I've even asked people if I could come sand, like rough sand. No way. For free in the summertime if they get real busy. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> Everyone's so always said yes. And they're like, come on in whenever you want. And I'm like, okay. And I just haven't gone. I haven't you had can, time. You can move Marlon in here. Yeah. <laughs> we might get his son to start working in here eventually. I really? think that'd be cool. I remember when he was born, like rolling down the slope. Yeah. And I stuff on the rolly chair. Yeah. That's bad. No, I'm, I really miss making fins. Oh, fins that's, cool. like, that's like a whole nother vortex. We're talking equipment. Oh, yeah, because people, fin on people completely for, like, don't even think about fins, too. Yeah, I'm almost scared to think of fins. Like, it's almost so overwhelming to me that I don't understand it. That I just go, like, I like this set of fins. Now this is my constant. Right. And I'll move it through my equipment, which is so sad. It's kind of cool, man. I know it's scary to open the box, but once you open Pandora's box, yeah. you learn a lot. Like, I, I got Mick handed me these fins that were so funky looking. I was like, Dude, there's no way those things work for me. And he's like, I swear, just put them in your board for yeah. a few ways. And they worked. And I was like, 
damn, they do work. And they're so weird looking. Like that shows you there's so many different variations of fins. And like I will never forget Al Merrick said this to me like in the 90s. He said, we were talking about fins and I was thinking about maybe trying something new or new shape, you know, and he goes, look, I shape my surfboards around my fins. It took me 20 years to perfect this fin template. And I was like, I've never heard anyone say I shape my surfboards wow. around my fins. Holy shit, that's like, we got a good set of tires on this thing. Like, let's get a, <laughs> let's get a chassis. Yeah, I mean, you're not well, putting race tires yeah. on, you know, like exactly. a Corolla. <laughs> you know? Exactly what we used to say. You don't put 10 speed tires on your, your, your F1 car, you know? That's so hilarious. Yeah. You know, don't so. put cheap plastic fins on your exactly. brand new board. Oh man, remember the FCS ones? Oh yeah, those were bad. <sighs> <laughs> Plastic, fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. They just go like, <laughs> yeah, no yeah. rebound, and there would be no rebound. It'd yeah. be like this slow coming yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> but people would be like, "Look how flexy these are." I'm like, "That's not good." Yeah, yeah. I like, tell people, yeah. tell them people, flex is not good yeah. unless you're riding one of those maybe single fins, you know, or something. But but even then, I don't. I just don't like flexy fins at any board. Do you, you like know? single fins? I. Do like them? Okay. I mean, I'm, I I like them better in a longboard than I like them in a shortboard. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> can you confirm? Did anyone on tour ever tell you that your fins were too uh, light when you were using bamboo fins? People did say that. Yeah. Yeah. Too, too light. Too light. Too light. And they floated. Yeah. They were. There was something to <laughs> the. I think it was a competitive advantage they were taking. They were taking advantage of Taylor messing with his <laughs> Who head. Who wasn't saying? Was it like somebody sabotaging you before he like? Oh, you know, I don't know about. Oh, that. you got those fins again? They're too oh, light, mate. He's, for some reason, yeah. it was too light. <laughs> yeah. Like, said, yeah. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was just the balance thing. You know, right now I'm using fins that are made from that G10 material, and I'm digging that. Yeah. Because it it's so stiff. Yeah. It's That's pretty so good stuff. So what's the G10 actually? material? It's like an epoxy layup, I think. Like. Almost like a, I think it's like an impregnated epoxy fiberglass thing or something. Okay. So it's, I don't know, the, this naked um, Viking fin company is making these fins and they're somehow getting six extra layers of fiberglass in, in each fin. Yeah. And it, I can just notice the stiffness and the twang and, you know, the foil of them and just digging it. You know, so I went from super light bamboo fins to now I'm using fins that, you know, have a little bit of weight, but Everything is That's everything. Really between. Yeah, you can go buy good. sheets of G10 in the perfect size. You can make when we get your shed set up and we're making boards. Oh, let's go get you. Like, we're gonna drop a shed and we'll just go DIY. Let's just do it. Yeah. Start yeah. making boards and fins. Tanner, he's got the spot. Let's yeah, connect yeah, on roofs. Yeah. Shape them out for us and just pull under no lights, just like the rails yeah. are looking like that. <laughs> like, we're gonna need a pretty good fin here. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think you got to open up that box just to keep surfing fresh, try different fins, templates, and you know, you'd know, be surprised. That's really yeah. interesting. It's interesting because I did the complete opposite when I was out here making boards and surfing a lot. I was riding everything, like a different board every session. You know, I'd go up in the attic at Moonlight and I'd be like, what's up here today? I'm going <laughs> to take this out and be like some old lynch or something. and. And I would never, it was like never riding the same board consistently. So every time I went out, my surfing was just all over the place. And yeah, that's the thing. That's like the opposite way of going down. That's like free know. radical positioning. Yeah. Just like, whoa, here we go. I think I would go out in the sessions and not even know if I'd be able to surf. It, it's, a, it's a thing, it's like you love to speed the process up, but at the same time, to do it justice, you've got to go out and spend some time on like one to four. Yeah. And go. Okay, this is how I'm gonna refine this, you know. Like, if you keep jumping around all the time, you're gonna be like, oh, I forgot what that feels like. What was yeah. that? Again? Yeah. I think that's why my wife surfs better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your wife at Swami's when yeah. you were gone. <laughs> I hate to bring it back to coffee, but it is similar in the way that, like, I can't even have, I don't even have the vocabulary with fins yet. Like, coffee is like, well, that tasted good. And to me, it's like, that fin felt good. And if I go fast, it's like, oh, that was fast, that was slow, that was tight, that was loose. Yeah. But it's like, you almost have to slowly build up that like how you even describe things mm -hmm. how they feel or in this case taste right and then you build off of that like yeah start with the base yeah you know, know what you kind of like, like slow build. start with like a template that you like and then try some materials different materials or something and then start going we should that. make a set of bamboo i'd be stoked to try that 
Yeah, Marlon would give you some. Yeah, I'm that'd sure be really glass fun. ons. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah, actually yeah, got yeah, a couple glass on board, so that would be yeah. super fun. Yeah, yeah pinboo glass ons. Is, is well, you saw it. You saw it. Yeah. Yeah. I got so excited. I hadn't seen a board with glass on fins. How weird really? is that? I don't know. Mine are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering how many surfboard factories there's guys in there that actually know how to do it. There's about five guys now. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be about five guys. Seriously. I think, I think I the mean, craftsmanship's gotten a lot better over the, the past like eight years though. It's, it's, with the retro boards coming back. Yeah, and, we, there's, it's kind of inspired a new like generation of people wanting to learn and the economy's good, so people are buying a lot of boards. And I think there's a, more people are learning to do it again. It's a really interesting time in surf because I feel like yeah. that whole area of people, even start to finish with surfboards like i'll shape it glass it sand it yeah this is my board is getting a lot of noise and then there's also like the tour and like these guys are just getting better as surfers in general with the olympics in sight it's like yeah. it's actually a really cool time to be alive yeah <laughs> I, I, I don't know drinking coffee like better but, than the alternative yeah. which is taking a little dirt now <laughs> no i think it, it's a it's a good time i think things have you know, there's been some rumble in the jungle and the surf industry lately, but like, I think it's, it's kind of like a, a wake up call. They were going, okay, like we got to go back to doing some of the things that we did before we got bit too big for our britches a little bit. And we started getting all these outside influences from people that weren't surfers. We weren't listening to ourselves. We were listening mm -hmm. to others that, and they didn't have the background that, yeah. that we do. It's not, that they're bad people, but you, you know, when you, when you have someone like Skip Fry or someone with that much history and, and knowledge and you can, you can talk to and the stoke and like those people need to be like cherished and listened to. And you know, the young people need to like come in and know who these guys are so mm -hmm. they can learn like, like there's more to just um, the sticker on your board and the paycheck that you're getting in the mail yeah. that you promised it's in the fame. It's more about like, if you're not here and you're not surfing for yourself and for the fun of it, then you might not be doing it for all the right reasons. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a lot of people at the top of the companies aren't thinking about the love of surf. It's a lot of it's almost mushroomed out into like this other world. Like I almost wonder, I was curious your perspective on that. Like I grew up in Gotcha was almost already, like I see the ads of like what was, who was on the team, MCD and Gotcha and then it kind of passed. Like, is the, a lot of these big companies, is that a circular thing where companies come up, they get really massive in surf, and then almost something smaller gets bigger? I, I have a feeling there's going to be some smaller things growing pretty soon, you know, out of all this, for sure. I mean, you look at MCD, you look at their logo, I mean, they were, they were Vulcan before Vulcan. Yeah. You know, they were core. Like, that was... Literally. Uh, yeah. yeah. They were core. Cool. Yeah. They yeah. were like, you know, it was like, whoa, that, that team is... You'd look at that team and just be intimidated. Yeah. You know, Jerry Lopez, Derek Post, Sonny Garcia, Martin Potter, Rob Machado. It was like, holy moly. Yeah, like, for sure. And, it, you know, Archie, like, everybody was on there. They were just really strong individuals, you know, and it was a strong company. And I think now that some of the guys that founded all these companies are stepping away, you know, because they're getting older and they're, it's their right to sell their company. So it's nothing wrong with it, but like, it's this new generation, guys your age and stuff that are going to start stuff and they're going to do something super cool. And everyone's going to go, yeah, I'm going to go with this brand because I know they're ran, it's ran by core guys. That's a cool, I mean, that's an uplifting yeah. thought on it because it's, it is a little dark. It, but it's a thought. Yeah. But I think something good will grow from it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think people will step out and go, okay, it's time for me to get out from behind this desk and start to be my own, be a boss. Yeah. And make, make something happen. Yeah, start a company. What's your thoughts on the Olympics? I know it's kind of like a big, weird, like not taboo ish question in surf, but like, do you think it's going to lift it up even further? Or is that like, because we're talking things going in a big direction or core? I, I think sur it's great. It's in surfing it's Olympics. I would say like, I still have that part of me that's like a, you know, I, I always be super appreciative of being on the tour. Oh, for sure. I, I feel the same. Like, totally. It's a great discipline. And there's that, there are those surfers out there that want that. They're like, you know, they want to win and they want to compete. And that's cool. Um, now the world has seen surfing for the first time in these Olympics. 
So I just really hope it's not in like two foot jump closeout short break. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you only get one time to make a first impression. Right. And so I, my, my theory was like, yeah, maybe the Kelly Sater weight pool is a good idea for the Olympics, you know? Like just so we're guaranteed, the world is guaranteed. This isn't, I think for the Olympics, you have to remember this, this Olympics is, for instance, it's not for us really. It's not for the surfers that already love surfing. It's for the rest of the world. Are they going to be interested? You need to make them interested. Get them interested. Yeah. This Do you think they're going to think, though, that surfing is takes place in a wave pool all the time, though? That could happen, <laughs> too. <laughs> Down the rabbit hole we yeah. go, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's... I mean, I would say, okay, we got Japan, but, like, you move it to... I don't know where the next Olympics will be, but... Me neither. Um, you know, hopefully it's I in I think a, Chopu is confirmed. Maybe not. Can you imagine the that world sick. seeing that? Now That'd that's a great. game changer. Yeah. Or Pipeline, or Hasegor, or J Bay. I mean, there's oh, or yeah. anywhere in Australia, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's about just the world seeing really what kind of amazing athletes surfers are. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I would have to say that Kelly Slater is the best athlete maybe ever out of all athletes. For sure. I mean, you know, that's he's. The rest of the world doesn't even know really how hard it is to drop in at Chopu when it's 10 foot. You know, it's, it's just really hard but <laughs> you can, to give I mean, someone that easy, feeling, though. you know? But <laughs> I was think. so pure. <laughs> but it's, it's so like, easy. Yeah. Trust me, I've been fished a yeah. shitload of times, yeah. I know. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, at least with Chopu, all the angles and you're so close to the channel and all the action, like, it, it is an incredible place to see just how dynamic and amazing it is. But when you're there in person, we all know it's like 10 times even more dynamic. Yeah. So, or pipeline or whatever it is. I just want to see surfing when it gets its shot to be in front of everyone. I hope, I hope it's a, you know, something decent yeah. in surf wise. Yeah. I feel like either way, it's like, there's that unknown in Japan that's like, it could go really well. Like at Chopes, you're almost more like, hey, like I feel safe. Like this is like representing surfing in the way that you would, it's the dream tour. Yeah. But it's like in Japan, you're like, all right, like where's it gonna be at? Like what's it gonna be like? And yeah. what's the ramifications of that? Yeah. Just like you're saying, like if it's a bad first impression, you're like, people might not be interested. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. there's a lot of really <laughs> funny sports in the Olympics. So I think we've got a good shot. And I actually sticking. watch those. Those are <laughs> like crazy. Like that thing where they they sweep before that ball. Curling? Curling, Curling yeah. yeah. Elliot, it's no, a, I mean, I'm on. completely baffled about if where that... If I have to move inland, I'm going to start trying that. <laughs> That's my only ticket to the Olympics. Mountain biking didn't work. Did you see his, <laughs> you see his kettle that like doubles as a, as a curling That's, ball? That is a curling ball. <laughs> we could throw that down we right here. On the concrete floor. In the yeah, actually, we, we see train. the red stripes back there? That's we should start a <laughs> curling team here. We, we could should. do it. Right back there. Meet Concrete. every Monday and do curling. North County do it under the Oceanside Pier. And we're like this. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there's already guys doing that. Actually, no curling ball, just like swimming it <laughs> super fast, like early morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. like we've had ten cups of his coffee, and yes. you're just like, all right, let's go. <laughs> we're curling on the soft sand. Actually, your coffee is so. Hey, let me ask you, how do you? How's your coffee not acidic? Like some mm. coffees are so acidy. So I think a lot of people actually get acidity and bitterness confused. They're actually, this actually is like high acidity and low bitterness. Bitterness is like the thing that lingers on the back of your tongue that's like chocolatey, like Starbucks and stuff kind of has a lot. And um, that's in the roasting that mm -hmm. we do. Um, kind of the selection of the green and then roasting it well, like not baking it too much or anything. And then I think that bitterness did you ever like did you ever drink like a lot of starbucks coffee and stuff yeah with a lot of like cream actually i mean i kind of never went the cream route because okay. just because i heard it wasn't like it changes whatever flavor i mean not that the coffee that i was drinking was yeah. great but but i think they're almost designed it's almost designed to be like doritos you finish it and you're kind of like ah uh, what was that again? And then you like uh, keep oh, drinking I'm it. Thirsty again. Well, you're kind of like, another. what was that? That's kind of weird. Okay. I didn't dislike it. <laughs> and then because I used to drink like 32 ounces of like Starbucks and go sand boards on it, like kind of have like a big thing in the factory, you know. And so that's kind of like bitterness actually. But to answer your question, I guess it all comes from roasting and caring oh. and trying really hard, like trying as hard as you do about like dialing in your equipment and your exercise and your fitness and everything with 
that, so. Is it like if I came in and, and ordered, I'm like, hey, can I have, you know, can I have a cappuccino? Hey, hey, can I? Hi guys, can I have a cappuccino? <laughs> but then you ask for, or maybe cream in your coffee, like, would you like room for cream? Right. Is that like a sin? Like when, whenever no, someone says that, are you guys like, oh man, there goes a good cup totally of coffee. A no, totally, totally a sin. Totally a sin. Oh, he's like, oh, you Ellen's know, lying. Like, okay. No. He looks down on people who have to put like any kind of additives in the coffee. No, and right. I get. Oh, you really want cream? I didn't know you were that kind of guy. Like, okay. He's, he's a coffee Nazi. <laughs> no, we want people. They're coming in. They're paying for something. We want them to enjoy it, whatever it is. Yeah. Like that's our main goal, really. But that didn't really answer. Like it does it like. No. From a coffee so, perspective. That's why we have batch brew. If you came and got like a ten dollar pour over of a Panama Geisha that's like super floral and stuff, we might be like maybe don't. If you if we would maybe ask if you like cream and sugar and yeah. be oh like don't spend ten bucks on that just get our batch brew it's going to taste better with the cream, right? So see they're there for you. Yeah, I'm learning. It's, kind of it's like good sushi without. Uh, some people say if you're having like a really nice dal then sushi then definitely don't dip it in your soy, soy sauce. sauce. Right. Yeah. Just like yeah. there goes the flavor. Yeah. They watch it. They like just make it and like they see him just dipping it and like <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, same with me in the cream. Like, you're getting yeah. the end of the fish. <laughs> yeah, do whatever you want. So when you were in Brazil with all these other roasters, uh -huh. with I mean, were they? Did you notice that like most of the roasting they did was darker than yours? Or no, we didn't get to try each other's coffee. Oh, yeah, it was okay. a buying trip. But it was an auction. So okay. I think though, just like looking at their profiles and talking to them, I think we're all kind of on the same plane. Oh, really? So, yeah. I so think. they would run this coffee through their espresso machines? Yeah. I think, all, I think all, a lot of us probably produce really similar coffee. I mean, some of the, I was kind of humbled to be there because we're only like four years old and stuff. And like, <laughs> that's really it was cool. like seven seeds from Australia, from Melbourne. They're like, they've been around forever. They're like one of the best in the world. Like these are all like kind of best in the world roasters from wow. where they were. That's he's so the fun. new guy in the CT. Dude, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like the rookie. The rookie of the year. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Came out of the gates and snapper strong. <laughs> oh man. He qualified. <laughs> Holy shit, who is this dude? He's like, like you ref and call Penta. Yeah. <laughs> that's really cool though to be in that like collective mind. Yeah. yeah. It was cool because then you go and you walk farms all day, you taste coffee together, and then you sit around, eat dinner. It's really cool, literally, how coffee and food brings everyone together. We go to a farm and we go to some person's house who lives up in the mountains and they have like full spread, like homemade cheese from their own cows and coffee that wow. they made there and you wow. just all hang out and sit in their room, like sit in their, stand like shoulder to shoulder in their little house, eat coffee, like say thanks. That's so rad. It is, it's really cool. And then hanging around talking to everybody at nighttime. Like, what, how do you do, like, you're sourcing from Mexico. Where are you getting good coffees from? How are you roasting things differently? It's kind of... That's like higher knowledge stuff. Like, it, it hey, was really all random. together. Like, how do we continue it's to It's kind of exactly it. what this is all about. Kind of, basically. Like, like, we're helping each other out. We're sharing profiles. I'm in here, like, taste brewing coffee. Hey, Jeff, come try this. Like, yeah. What do you think? Is this good? Is this bad? Because nobody actually really knows what the good what good coffee is really like and what bad coffee. Is. We might look back ten years from now and be like, remember when we were drinking this? <laughs> the CFs, <laughs> early FCS spins. Yeah. All the way back to instant coffee, like the whole thing yeah. comes all the way. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, we yeah. were on the whole time. Well, yeah. This is great. It's kind of wild. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, is thanks that, for having us. I mean, yeah. this is this is really a fun spot to meet up. Thanks for coming by. Up. Yeah. Thanks. thanks for having us. Buddy. Okay, cool. Good connection. I really appreciate it, Elliot. Yeah, yeah I'm course. stoked you guys got the meat. I'm, you know, he's he's getting the kind of. I want to dial him in with all the all the good people. Of San he Diego. literally has been my like life coach, North County. Life <laughs> no, coach. I have. seriously though, yeah. like it's like crazy because we did the, when I first moved in. I I was calling you for surfs, and you're like, hey, like, you know, let's go to the pool, Alga Norte. You're like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna train with Sean Taylor. And yeah. I was like, oh, cool, like I can meet you there. And then literally we're driving, and I'll never forget. You're like. Dude, you're, you're so stoked. Like, there's a place and they have their bread right here. They make bread. And then there's the best coffee I've ever had in my life. And I travel all my life. And this is the best coffee. And yeah. then, I think you even mentioned Happy Pantry with the live cultured stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Happy That's Pantry's good. great. Yeah. I was oh. tripping. So then basically, I just went, like, after that, of course, was like, oh, thanks so much. And then I just did the research and then, like, popped into every store and they've become, like, my favorite craze. So, yeah. Best coffee in the world to me, right here. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs>